morning on Snow Lake. Had a delightful swim. This lake is really warm. That's where my little tent was. There's a fire pit. Pika is packing up and we were joined by a woman named Morgan and she left before dawn. Good morning. So last night I had a very weird encounter. I kept hearing this weird noise, scratch, 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 on my um, Tyvek. And I remembered that um, Pika said her socks had been stolen out of her boots, probably by a squirrel or a mouse. So I was thinking, oh my God, there's there. And my shoes were outside. So I was like, oh my God, there's a mouse and he's going to chew my shoelaces. He's going to steal my socks. So I kept banging the side of the tent. Didn't go away. I thought, that's weird because a mouse would have scurried away. So I kind of put my hand there to see if I could feel anything. And it make, made lots of noise. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just... A, um, a pine needle just hitting my tie back, but it only happened in one spot. And I'm like, okay, what is this? So then I could hear, it was like walking at this point. I could hear walking, and then I could hear like a little hissing kind of noise. And so I thought, oh God, I bet it's a bug. So I um, put my, my uh, headlamp out, but I couldn't see it. So I got out of the tent and I kind of lifted the tent up and looked under it, and I could see like this weird beetle-ish thing. But every time I would reach for it, it would scurry away. So I'm lifting the tent as much as I can to get this damn beetle out from underneath, and it would scurry away. So I finally was able to kind of get behind it and kind of sweep it out from under the tent, and it grabs onto my hand. And um, it was about the size, I swear to God, it was about the size of the end of my little finger. And it kind of looked like a grasshopper, but without the long, foldy legs. And it was kind of fatter, fatter than a grasshopper. And, like, big! And so, um, so I shook my hand, and um, it let go of me. And uh, it landed on the ground, and then I shined my flashlight on it, or my headlamp on it. And every time I would shine my headlamp on it, it would jump up and, like, do a flip and then land back down again. It's like trying to get to the light. So... I tried to, uh, like, fling it out of the way. But then every time I would fling it out of the way, you know, I needed to see where I was flinging it, um, it would scurry right back to me. And I'd be like, oh, my God. So the only thing I had, I got, I got to kill this thing. The only thing I had was my headlamp. So I take my headlamp and I try to kill it. And at that, at that point, it was on the side of my headlamp. And I didn't know, was it dead and squished to the side of my headlamp? Or was it clinging to the side of my headlamp and then trying to attack me? And so visions of um, one of the Star Trek movies. I think it was Star Trek Wrath of Khan. They take this weird wormy thing and they stick it in the, their enemy's ears. And it like slithers into their ears and starts eating their brain. So that's going through my head. That this thing is going to attack me. And like eat me. So I start pounding on, on the ground with my headlamp. And so I'm sure, and then I can't see it because it's on the side of my headlamp. So I can't see it. I'm flinging the headlamp everywhere. Probably my neighbors are all thinking I'm crazy. But it finally falls out of my headlamp. And I don't know where it went. But I was reassured that I didn't hear that noise anymore. But had a weird bug murdering episode last night. And I don't believe anything is in my ears eating my brain, so that's good. But that, that is the very reason that I do not cowboy camp. Because that thing would have climbed in bed with me and um, did not want to snuggle with some ginormous bug. So that was my night. Hope yours was great. The trail is lovely this morning, just meandering through the woods. I love this elevation because I love the little trees. And there are lots and lots and lots of streams. and Well, actually, the streams are mostly dry, but lots and lots of ponds. And it's now, I think it's like about 7. A little cool this morning, which is amazing.
one of many ponds I've been passing by. Luckily, no bugs. Morning mist on another little pond. I'm never going to get anywhere because there are blueberries now, huckleberries, blueberries. And I keep stopping to eat and I keep stopping to text with Eric. But these berries, mmm, they're delicious. So, and they're getting more and more prolific as I go south. Yum. Hmm. Someone else likes the blueberries as well as I do. Don't step in that. That's a fresh one. Hello to the animal that did that. Oop, I have another message. Eric keeps texting me this morning. Whoa. More. I don't know what that is, but kind of making me a little nervous. Oh wow, things are very dry. I remember this stream when I hiked this section with Wendy. And now it is completely dry. Wee vey. Um, still scared of that norovirus thing. And I actually have a funny story about that. Um, you start kind of going crazy out here. And so I've been really worried about the norovirus thing. And, and uh, especially coming um, from the north where it was more reported. But one night when I was at Dewey Lake, I was laying in bed and it was kind of middle of the night. Oh, someone's talking. I'll continue my story in just a minute. I was saying, um, you get kind of a little crazy out here. And one night I was laying in bed at Dewey Lake and I heard gurgle, 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 splishy, splashy, splishy. I thought it was my stomach rumbling. But I was like, I feel fine though. And um, kept hearing it and I thought, oh boy, you know, something is really moving through me and this is gonna be bad. So, so scared. And it kept happening. And so then I like put my hand on my stomach. And, um, cause you know, sometimes you can feel things when your stomach's gurgling. You can feel things kind of moving around. I didn't feel anything. I thought, okay, this is a really bad virus. If it's really sounding so liquidy and it's moving through me like this and I don't even feel it. So I thought I was going to have some major problems in the morning until I realized it wasn't me at all. It was um, some ducks right down on the shore and they were splishing and splashing around and bathing themselves. So, it wasn't my stomach at all. Thank goodness. So you kind of start hearing weird things and thinking weird things when you spend too much time by yourself. So, oh gosh, I love these trees. So pretty this morning. Just met some older gentlemen who have done section by section and they're up to 2300 miles and they just do little bits over the last like couple years so you can do this trail however you choose and here's another lake I don't know what lake this is they are so many who knows qualifies as a lake that's really little and a pond and another lake they're everywhere nice little campsite there for out it does not know where I am it thinks I'm still back at Snow Lake but I've been hiking for an hour and I'm not at Snow Lake so I think this is Pipe Lake this is a pretty lake it's kind of green in color It's very clear. You can see the bottom and lots of campsites. Bummer. Oh well. Onward. Okay, 
Okay, the last lake was green. Should have named it Green Lake. This lake is brown. Not drinking out of that thing. I believe this is Bausch Lake. This is where Wendy and I stayed on this stretch. It has a lot more weeds than I tend to remember. Not a very swimmable lake. Yes, this is where Wendy and I camped. The night we camped here, it got almost to freezing. It was so cold. But we were lulled to sleep by, oh my goodness. We were lulled to sleep by the exit stream, which is now completely dry. Wow, what a difference. Here we are at Sand Lake. Very shallow. When Wendy and I were here, there were streams going into it. That's not now. It is so dry that I have to keep my distance behind Pika because she leaves a dust dust trail. I don't want to eat her dust. Make adorable little noises too. Yeah, they do. So do we. Oh yeah. Well, I could film you, but they're they're. <laughs> they signed the release, probably. Went about two miles out of White Pass to this lovely little lake, oh, Jeanette Lake. There's chairlifts from White Pass Ski Area. campsite. And there goes the trail. Out there. Just came up the thing above a pass above Shoe Lake, and I'm getting my first closer glimpse of goat racks. So, this was well worth the wait. I got up early, decided to have a quick dry breakfast. I 
and come up here and have my coffee and my oatmeal. Look at Shoe Leg. Behind that peak are the goats, Corux. But can't beat that view. Now for some caramel macchiato. Okay. Okay. Now that I'm not speechless anymore, I can video, but like I was here before and had no idea how beautiful this was all around me. Um, the trail is fabulous. The view is fabulous. I have still nine miles to go, and um, I thought, oh, I'll be there early. I think it's going to take me all day if things are still like this. Here's the perfect shot of where I'm going to be in a few days. Well, not a few days, tomorrow. That is the knife edge. And that pointy thing right there is old snowy. Can't believe it. Eerie burn. Okay, so I'm seeing things again. First I see faces and rocks. Now I think that looks like someone's hand flipping you off. That is one huge mushroom. Going up there. Now I'm in the meadow side. Um, we're going to go up that stream right there, and then over there, and then around that, and then the other side, then you go up the knife edge. But tonight I'm going to camp up there somewhere, as far up as I can get. Once I get some water, because I'm out of water. Pretty cool. Going to get water coming from that little snow field. It's gonna taste so good. Okay, this is like beyond belief. This is where I'm gonna spend the night.
Look at that snow up there. There's this gorgeous stream. That's not so pretty. But there's those woods there and I'm looking at this tent site right over here. I'm gonna check it all out. Maybe up in the woods might be better, but wow, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Sight. And there's going to be my view. Holy crap on a cracker. Might be kind of windy. Check this out. Now I don't know. Here's another camp spot. It's overlooking that. Oh, well, there's the camp spot down there that I was thinking about. Well, that's teensy. But there's a bunch in here. I don't know which is gonna be less windy. There's one right there. There's one right there. I just gotta check the view out. This is huge. Spot over there. No good view. This could hold so many people. And guess how many are here? Me. Just me. Okay, I gotta consider the wind. Oop, don't, don't camp there. Dead wood. Okay. I think I'm fucked. I went to turn my Garmin on and it's like it doesn't know me. It says it's not activated. So I'm trying to activate it, but you can't activate it without going online to Garmin.com. So now I have no SOS capability with my Garmin. And I'm about to do the knife edge. And I can't communicate with Eric. He's going to freak. Yeah. I'm hoping it says waiting for confirmation. I don't know why it's not. I turned it off earlier to save battery. I don't know what I did. Okay, so it's not like I can't hike, but I'm just feeling really alone. <laughs> because I have no way to communicate with my family. And that's the old fashioned way. My navigation still works. My far out still works. I thought I saw someone up on the ridge, the Nobo, coming down. So, if um, I can get someone to help me, I'm gonna try to get a message to Eric that I'm okay. I am okay. I'm not hurt. I'm not hungry. I'm not cold. I'm not tired. But I'm not. There's nothing wrong with me other than. I just feel really alone and I'm doing the knife edge all by myself. I can do it. It's fine. I just won't have any SOS capability if anything does go wrong. Okay, video update. Um, I found some three gentlemen who were section hiking and they had a Garmin and we started to um, text Eric about the fact that my Garmin wasn't activated and uh, he wouldn't hear from me until I got to Trout Lake. One guy says, well, I have cell service, why don't we just call him? So called him, told him my garment's not activated, I don't know what's wrong. He actually, Eric was able to activate it. So after crying to the first couple I met who didn't have a garment, David and Dina, they are wonderful. They're camped right near me. There's me and um, I'm feeling much better now. I'm activated again, I can communicate. More, more importantly, I was a little scared to do stuff by myself without having an SOS. I mean, I know that's 
been done before, but you know, it just makes me feel better. And I gotta show you dinner tonight. Dinner tonight is true hiker trash. Um, I made uh, nor uh, Spanish rice or Mexican rice, and I put little smokies in it or sausages and, and uh, Fritos. Total hiker trash meal. And the tent broke last night. This does not zip. That does not zip. And it's horribly windy. So everything is covered in dirt. But it's pretty out. 